Brownie, I'll start with you, mate. Um, obviously, 2018, you came in as head coach for one year. Fast forward to now, uh, from your perspective, the reasons for you putting your hand up to, to want to be the head coach of the Highlanders uh, going into 2021? Yeah, I think um, 2018, obviously head coach and um, was a reluctant uh, head coach at the time. Just felt as though I had a lot more to offer um, sticking in my assistant coach role. Um, but, you know, three years on, um, spent a bit of time in Japan, um, got put put it through the pump with the Sunwolves as the head coach of that for um, for a year, which um, was great experience. And just feel as though it's probably um, I understand what's required as, as a head coach now, and pretty comfortable to, to jump in the role, and pretty confident I can do a good job. What are you wanting to sort of change in terms of the environment or the way the Highlanders play from what they've been doing in the last few seasons? Uh, I just think it's really important that we create an identity that's. You know, Highlanders, I think um, potentially might have lost a little bit of that over the last few years. Uh, I want to take us back to um, that identity and, and make sure the players understand that, what the environment's about, and go out and you know, play good footy um, and entertain the fans. When you talk about identity, what does is, what is a Highlander man to you, or what does a Highlander look like? Um, yeah, Highlander man, it sort of gets thrown around quite a bit, but... For me, it's just someone who's really willing to sacrifice for the team, um, loves being a part of the team, loves coming to work every day, um, and has a lot of fun in the Highlanders jersey, but is ultimately really competitive and wants to win every game. You've put your own sort of stamp on this, this squad, and, and one player that you've signed a sort of a long-term deal and a three-year deal is um, Solomon Alamalo. Um, sort of... What excites you about him and, and are you obviously looking forward to, to coaching him for the next wee while? Yeah, obviously with um, you know, the loss of um, guys like uh, Wasaki Naholo and Patrick Osborne, we feel as though we need a bit more firepower um, out in the outside backs and um, Solomon definitely brings that. He's quite a physical um, specimen, tall guy and hopefully he can put on a bit, bit more size and be a bit of a weapon out in the outside channels, whether he's at fullback or on the wing. Um, so I think he's one that the fans will um, hopefully fall in love with. He had three guys that played in that 15 jersey last year that are returning, and Scott Gregory, uh, Karoy, and also Mikey Collins. Where do you see Solomon fitting? Is it in that 15 spot, or is it, or is it on the wing, or are the, all those guys going to be vying for that 15 jumper? I think his favourite position's 15. I think he'd want to try and secure that spot. Um, but he obviously is just as lethal on the on the wing as well. So yeah, there'd be a bit of competition there, and it all depend on you know a bit of the style of the game we want to play. Um, what role the fifteen plays? Does he play a bit more like a first receiver, um, but a bit more of a first five, or do we use him as a bit of a weapon and a bit more of an attacking threat out in the wide channels? In terms of your um, loose forward trio, some real talent some, uh, across the board in that um, that department. How are you going to manage those guys? Um, yeah, it's pretty competitive there. Um, as you know, it's you know the attrition on the loose forwards is huge. I think um, not too many teams can get through a Super Rugby comp with only using three loose forwards. So I think it's pretty exciting to have this depth um, at our hands, and it'll be competitive. Um, for spots and you know but I think it's just going to strengthen our team and, and hopefully strengthen our forward back. One guy that's um, making his comeback to the side is sitting beside you, Liam Squire. Um, you know his, his body's sort of been um, through the ringer over the last couple of years but how, how are you going to manage him to make sure that you get the best out of um, him this season? Oh, I just think for a squid here it's um, a matter of getting his body right um, getting himself to, back to the condition that he knows he can really compete at the highest level. Um, once, once he's got there, you know, then we're going to get him some game time and, and sort of manage his load a little bit at the early stages of the season um, and try and get him really firing towards the back end. And, you know, for me um, and Squid, I reckon that he can get back to his best footy and have a real crack at making the All Blacks again. You've got three um, really talented sevens, one world-class and uh, Himino uh, coming over from Japan. Uh, Billy coming down from the Crusaders and, and obviously Jimmy returning from injury. 
Um, that competition for that seven jersey, uh, is that where you see Hemino fitting in or do you see him fitting across the board? Yeah, probably across the board, I think, initially. Um, he can play all three loose forward positions, um, just depending on you know who's fit and um, how well Shannon comes back from his all-black break, um, where we slot him and I. Um, I'm really excited about um, Billy Harmon coming down and his competition with Jimmy Lynchy, so I think that'll be um, you know pretty awesome for us. Both will, will um, no doubt go at it to try and command that starting spot. So I think those two guys will probably be our starting sevens initially. Um, in terms of Jimmy Lynch, he was the captain last year. What, what are you doing in that space? Obviously that changed during Super Rugby Aotearoa with Jimmy being out with injury. Um, have you made a decision around the captaincy for 2021? Yeah, we're going to stick with um, uh, Ash Dixon and Aaron Smith as our um, captains. I uh, feel as though Jimmy's got a, a massive fight on his hands to not only get fit but to get that starting spot at seven. Um, so he's comfortable just having that as his challenge and his focus going into 2021. So, um, and he's happy to back up um, Ash and, and Aaron because I think they did a great job in um, Aotearoa comp last year. Uh, one guy that's come back into New Zealand, um, ex All Black, um, Brent Evans. Um, Hasn't played a hell of a lot of Mitre 10 Cup uh, this season, but what, what were the reasons behind his selection? I think with um, a lot of our squad, um, I really tried to get a bit more experience, like my old mate here, Squip. Um, so we tried to um, surround our young guys, because we've got a lot of young guys with um, experienced players. And I feel as though with Bryn Evans, he's a bit of a line-out specialist, um, really smart around um, defensive line-out and can bring a little bit of the UK um, mauling aspect into, into our footy. So for us, he's going to be a bit of a mentoring role for our young locks. And um, when he does get the opportunity, I know he can play at the highest level. So um, for me, you know, quite an exciting um, signing around giving us a bit more experience. Lost Tyrell Lomax to the Hurricanes last year and, and probably lacked that big tight head for the Highlanders. Um, brought in Jermaine Ainsley from, from the Wallabies. Um, what are you looking for him to, what do you expect from him to bring uh, to, to the team in 2021? Yeah, well Jermaine's um, obviously an Otago boy. Um, went over to Perth, out of school here, he's an Otago boy, so for me he's just coming home and um, I don't see him as a Wallaby. Uh, <laughs> see him as a, as a Highlander man, so I'm, I'm hoping that he's going to play his best rugby for the Highlanders and he's played international rugby but I think the best is in front of him and I'm hoping to get him um, up and running pretty quickly and, and see him if he can be you know, a dominant tight head for us. A lot of young talent in the squad across the board, anyone in particular that you're really excited about to, to see go around in, in 2021 for Super Rugby? I think um, you know the, the one guy who I've really um, thought has been one of the best players in the Mighty Team Cup has been for Lau Fakatava. I think um, in 2021 he's going to have a real impact on this team and I know we've got Aaron Smith as, as our um, All Black and our starting nine but I think with the way that Falau's playing um, he's going to start to put a lot of pressure on Aaron Smith and I think he'll get a lot more game time and potentially you might see him coming on at back into games and being a real threat with uh, ball in hand. Um, another guy that obviously has had a horrid run with injuries over the last few years is um, Thomas Umanga Jensen. Looks the part for Otago in the few games he's played. Um, you must be really excited to get your hands on him and hopefully see him on the field. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's turned himself into a bit of a beast. Um, I think he's weighing in at 113 kgs and running, running as quick as a winger. And um, you know he's looking really good in the in the gym. And obviously only played 20 minutes the other day. For Otago, but um, I think he's going to have a massive 2021. And if he can make that uh, centre spot his own, then you know he's going to be, um, you know, pushing on all that selection. I'm sure. Overall, the Highlanders squad. Are you really happy with the the team you've put together, and and how do you see it sort of panning out for you guys um, in 2021? Yeah, I think we had um, a lot of young guys last year, and I think. Um, we didn't have a lot of experience at Super Rugby level. 
um, around what, what it takes to, to win games, especially in the dying moments of, um, of the game in the last 20 minutes. So with a lot more experience, I think um, you know, we've got a, be a better team and a better team that can really compete at the highest level. So hoping to um, play some pretty good footy, but in the key moments in games, with um, a bit more experience, I think we're going to um, hopefully execute a bit better and, and instead of losing by a couple of points, we're going to be winning those games. Stuff downtown. Squiddy, over to you, mate. Um, Liam, it's been a bit of a roller coaster 12 months um, for you. Um, can you talk us through sort of where you've been, what you've gone through, um, and how you overcame that, all, the, all those obstacles? Yeah, I guess um, I wasn't so uh, planned to come back to New Zealand uh, so early from Japan, um, but uh, injury earlier on in the Japan comp sort of sent me back here for for knee surgery. But um, just uh, after that, uh, COVID sort of hit here and, and um, we were sort of locked down. So um, it was in that time it was sort of advised that I'd get my hip done uh, after the lockdown. So uh, that was an injury that sort of that sort of been prolonging for quite a while. Um, so it was good to good to get that done, but uh, I guess the downside of that was it sort of pushed my rehab back. Um, it was sort of couldn't go back to Japan as early as I could, so um, yeah, I've ended up staying here, which is also a positive for me. So why why New Zealand and not chase another sort of overseas opportunity? Was it um, just the the fact of being closer to family, or, or what were the reasons behind that? Yeah, I guess I guess after probably getting that that hip surgery and, and how I was feeling, um, and also probably uh, a couple of other little things, I sort of felt felt like I still had a bit left here in New Zealand, and um, I guess yeah, staying home and, and playing Super Rugby again uh, was quite exciting. I sort of feel sort of refreshed again, so I was sort of got my second one. Seen you out on the farm doing a bit of work um, up at the Hawes farm. Uh, how have you enjoyed that? Yeah, it's been an experience. Um, yeah, it's been been quite quite good catching up with uh, Andrew Hoare and and being out on his farm and, and learning a bit, sort of uh, learning some new skills. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been bloody good. The body's been through the ringer um, through your whole career. Um, is it going to be able to stand up to the rigours of Super Rugby for a full full season? You think? Yeah, yeah, I, I have no doubt. I sort of this year has been um, it's been quite tough, but it's also given me a chance to to get all those injuries taken care of. So I haven't really had a, a chance to have a good preseason like this, where I've just been able to focus on on what I need to strengthen and all around that. So um, yeah, I'm sort of heading in the, in the right direction. I'm not quite a hundred percent yet, but uh, we're definitely building. So. I think come uh, Super Rugby, it'll, I'll be hitting my strides. So come the new year, um, what's Liam Squire wanting to achieve um, with the Highlanders this year? Um, I guess coming in is the best best condition I can possibly be uh, and the healthiest. So, and then I guess if I get the chance to to play as, as playing consistently and playing at a higher level uh, than than what I left at. So. I've sort of got quite high standards of where I want to go to um, coming back and that's quite exciting for me and it's got me up for, for this next season. It's exciting for me, Sweet. <laughs> Off the back of that, um, if you do reach those heights, is there um, you still keen to take it to another level in terms of international footy? Yeah, that, that dream is definitely, definitely not over. Um, it's something that, yeah, it does sort of burn in the back of my mind. So, But uh, for me... I sort of don't look too far ahead. I guess making the uh, Highlanders squad's probably the number one priority. It's, um, we've got a lot of depth in the loose forward, like Brownie said, so um, it's going to be exciting and, and challenging in that, in that aspect.